Glory to God. Having your Bibles this morning, I'd like for you to turn with me, please, to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. And don't let that scare you. <laughs> Genesis, chapter 1. Yeah, I don't want you to think I'm going to preach the whole Bible. Some people get a little nervous. Oh, no. Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know what we're going to talk about. I'm excited. <laughs> I know what the Lord has for us this morning. Praise the Lord. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. One of the things we teach around here is what's called the law of first reference. Whenever something is mentioned for the first time in the Bible, it is a foundation for every other thing that the Bible reveals to us about that subject, and it sets a precedent. It's foundational, and yet it's very revelatory. It reveals a lot of things. And I want you to notice here in verse 2, this is the first mention of the Holy Spirit. It says, "...and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters." So this is the first mention of him, and we see two very important things. We see that he moved, and that he moved upon the face of the waters. The Holy Spirit has always been associated with water. Right? And isn't it interesting that people that know something about the Holy Spirit... The churches that do embrace the Holy Spirit, most of them pray this prayer. Oh, Holy Spirit, please move here. Please move. Oh, God, move by your Spirit. And the way they pray, it sounds like they believe the Holy Spirit's stuck. And I want you to know He's never been stuck. And the first reference is about Him moving. This is His characteristic. He is moving. And He's moving upon the face of the water. Now, many times throughout the Bible, water represents people. And seas represent people. So it's a double reference here to physical water and the waters of people. But the Holy Spirit, first reference, is that He's moving. But there's a mindset that he's stuck. And we've got to fast, we've got to pray, we've got to come up with some kind of program to get him to move. And once he moves, boy, it's great when he moves, but you know how it is. He gets tired and he stops. And then we've got to wait for him to move again, and it may be another 30, 40 years. Oh, praise God. Don't ever let us believe that here at this church. My goodness. He's moving more than we realize he's moving. Go with me, please, to the book of John, chapter 7. Look at something Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. John 7, 37. I don't know, that just speaks volumes to me, that the first mention of the Holy Spirit is about Him moving. John 7, 37 through 39 in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Let's read that again. I want you to see something. In the, la in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried. So he was yelling this out. He was getting people's attention. And he yelled, he cried out loud, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, he's still crying this out, he's still yelling this. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then here's a parenthetical statement, the, Holy, the Spirit of God's revealing to us here what he was talking about. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So this drinking is him talking about the Holy Spirit. And then 
This rivers of living water, he's mentioning, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, right? So he says, shall flow rivers of living water. There is a flow to the Holy Spirit. There is a flow to the Holy Spirit. There is a flow to the things of the Spirit. I just said two different things. There's a flow to the Holy Spirit. There is a flow to the things of the Holy Spirit. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, get in the flow. That's the name of the title. That's the title of the message, get in the flow. Get in the flow. The Holy Spirit is flowing. You and I need to not pray, oh, Holy Spirit, move. What we need to do is we need to get in the flow. Because he's already moving. He's already flowing. If we really understood this, we would realize that it's really, it's wrong to pray, oh, Holy Spirit, move. Oh, God, move by your spirit. That's like praying, oh, God, send Jesus to die on the cross. It really is. It's a prayer that's invalid. Now, God looks at us in our ignorance and in our sincerity, and he says, you need to do something over there. (laughs) But the truth is, we don't need to pray that. We just need to get in the flow because he's flowing. Glory to God. There is a flow to the Holy Spirit. The devil creates shortages. I don't know if I invented a new word or not. By stoppages. (laughs) The devil creates shortages by stopping things. If the Holy Spirit's flowing, if there's a river of living waters and there's abundance, then we know the opposite is a creating of shortages. The Holy Spirit is associated with abundance. Amen. Jesus did not say the Holy Spirit is like a river. He said He's like rivers of living water. We're talking abundance. We're talking an overflow of something happening in our life, and it's by the Spirit of God. Anything that's shortage, anything that's drying up, you know the devil's behind that. But if there's life, if there's vibrancy, if there's an overflow, that's the Spirit of God moving. Hallelujah. Thank you for those amens. What area of your life is drying up? Pray in tongues concerning that area and release a Holy Ghost flow in there. Oh, here's another area that we have prayed wrong. Oh, God. Oh, God, I'm so dry. Oh, God, it must be a barren season for me. I'm so dry. I'm so dry. Oh, God, help me. I'm so dry. I think I'm going to fast because I'm so dry. (laughs) And the Holy Ghost is like, hey, hey, I'm here. I'm here. Let me flow. Let me go. Let me in that area. Let me flow in that dry, barren area. Yield to the flow. There's no area of your life that should be dry and barren. It's not God's will for us to live a dry, barren life. Man, if anybody should have a, woo, it it ought to be us, you know. For some some reason, I want to go, woo. (laughs) We need an Indian dance. Something going on, man. Look at your neighbor and say, get in the flow. There is a flow. There is a flow to the Holy Ghost. And there's a flow to the things that He has for us. Glory to God. Stop saying I'm dry. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. And release a flow in that area. And what's dry and dead and barren will begin to bud with green life for you on the inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. (laughs) Don't do that. It gets to me. (laughs) Makes me want to (laughs) run. I had two whoops. (laughs) <laughs> we may be white on the outside but we black on the inside <laughs> for all my precious black brothers and sisters that was a compliment <laughs> hallelujah 1 Corinthians chapter 12 please 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 oh I'm so thankful that there's a flow to the Holy Spirit There's a flow to the things of the Spirit. 
And He desires to flow through you and me. But we have to yield to the flow. Glory to God. When we get to heaven, I wonder if there's going to be like three minutes. God's going to say, all right, I want to show you all the dumb prayers you prayed. <laughs> and we like hang our head for a little bit like, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. He goes, yeah, I know you didn't. I just want to show you how much time you spent wasted on these dumb prayers. Like, oh, forgive me. And he'll say, that's right. We got around it anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. These manifestations of the Spirit is what happens when the Holy Spirit is flowing. You know, if you stand by and see a, a large body of river and that river is flowing, there's manifestations of a river flowing. And Jesus said there'll be rivers of living water flowing. So these manifestations, this is what's going to happen. This is what you're going to experience when you yield to the flow of the Holy Ghost. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Everybody say every man. Every man. That includes you because you're an every man. Right? Amen. To profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts, plural, of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's given to every man. It's God's will for you because you're an every man. Don't say it's not God's will for me to experience the gifts when you're an every man. These nine manifestations happen when the Spirit flows. When the Spirit gets to moving, things happen. Amen. And I don't mean that like when He gets to moving, like when He gets up off His duff. I'm just saying that when we get in the flow and we experience the moving of the Spirit, things happen. Life happens. Creativity happens. Ideas and concepts come to us. Miracles happen. Faith comes. There's an there's a energy that comes into us when the Spirit flows. Amen. There's manifestations. It's obvious when the Holy Spirit is at work. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Please look at your neighbor and say, get in the flow. Get in the flow. <laughs> there is a flow to the Holy Spirit. We need to get in the, in the flow. Well, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, teach me to yield to the flow. Now that's a whole lot better than, oh God, please move. Please move, please move. It's, more, it's far more accurate to say, Lord, teach me how to yield to the flow, to the moving of the Spirit, because He's always on the move. The Holy Spirit doesn't take time off. He doesn't work just Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. And He never gets tired. That's why there's times you'll wake up in the middle of the night and God will be talking to you. You'll wake up in the middle of the night and you, find, and you wake yourself up praying in the Holy Ghost. You wake yourself up because, God, because an angel's standing there. I mean, God's always moving. He's always doing. Hallelujah. Jesus may be seated at the Father's right hand, but He's still active because He ever lives to make intercession for us. Praise God. The Holy Spirit cannot move through people who are tense and tight. The Holy Spirit cannot move through people who are tense and tight. And my heart goes out to people. We're all at different levels. People come forward. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? And they get real tense. Has it happened yet? Am I filled yet? No, take a deep breath and relax. And he seems still tense. The Holy Spirit cannot move through people who are tense and tight. Now, many of us recognize that with the initial infilling of the Holy Spirit, but some of us who've been around for decades, when you start talking about miracles, has it happened yet? 
Has the word of knowledge happened yet? What about the gift of faith? Is it working? <laughs> we get tense and tight. Every new level we experience with the Holy Spirit, we always brace it up. And the Holy Spirit's like, yay, yay, yay. We've got to go through it again. You've got to stay, just relax. To yield, you have to relax. He wants to flow. He wants to move through. But you stand there real tense and tight. It's not going to work. I'm not, I'm not bashing anybody. I'm trying to help us all. Amen? If you desire the gifts of the Spirit to function in your life, you must be a person of yieldedness and a person of action. Amen. You have to be yielded and you have to act. Let me get ahead of myself for a moment. The Holy Spirit does not speak in tongues. You do. The Holy Spirit is not going to lay His hands on someone and bring healing. You're the one that's got the hands. You're the one that's going to lay hands on. You're the one that's going to speak. The Holy Spirit will do the job, but He's not going to do it without you. Amen. So you've got to be yielded and you've got to be a person of action. Amen. If you want the gifts of the Spirit to manifest in your life, you have to yield and you have to be a person of action. Now here, herein lies the problem. People believe that if something is of God, then it's going to be perfect. The problem is, this is not God's perfect, but He flows through imperfect people. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Don't, don't choke on what I'm about to tell you. Spiritual things have to be practiced. Yeah. Spir if you're going to get good at anything, you're going to have to practice. Mm -hmm. And people go, no, no, I don't believe in practicing that. No, no. Because when God moves, we all know it's God and it's perfect. He's using imperfect people. So a perfect God flowing through imperfect people, it may come out imperfect. That's why you need to practice uh -huh. letting God flow through you and use you till you can develop. Yes. Amen. Well, Phil, I might make a mistake. You will. I have, you will, and we will. I'm not prophesying doom. I'm just telling you that as we learn and grow, we're going to make mistakes. But God would rather you make a mistake as to stand there all tense and tight and not do anything. <laughs> this management for dummies book, he says, if you're not, he says, if you're not failing, you're not trying. Mm. Wow. And too many of us wanted to be perfect the first time and we're waiting on God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> yeah, it's a freebie. In order to be spirit-led, you, you will have to consecrate, consecrate yourself to God's plan for your life instead of following a plan of your own making. In order to be spirit-led, you will have to consecrate yourself to God's plan for your life instead of following after a plan of your own making. Okay. Not only do the gifts of the Spirit glorify Jesus, but the Holy Spirit will work in you until your whole life glorifies the Lord Jesus. We know that the manifestations of the Spirit, we can discern between a manifestation of the Spirit and a manifestation of an evil spirit because the Holy Spirit's gifts always glorify Jesus. Well, as we yield our lives to the Holy Spirit and allow God to work in us, and we say, God, not my will, but thy will be done, the more we're conformed to that, the more our life gives God glory. Amen. But the more we're stubborn with our own plan, Lord, just bless my plan. You know, Lord, Lord, look, Lord, look at my plan. I've, I've worked on this plan. God, this is a really good plan. If you'll just bless my plan, we'll be all right. <laughs> and God says, the problem with your plan is you think too small. Amen. Well, Lord, I said I'd be out of debt by 45. He said, I know, I want you out of debt at 35. Amen. <laughs> well, Lord, I got this plan. Lord, I got 2.3 kids on this plan. <laughs> and, you know, the statistics are, you know, that, that point three is a dog. <laughs> God says, that's great, but... My plan for you is not to have any dogs because you're going to be doing a lot of traveling. Uh -huh. yeah. Ow. Well, Lord, okay, what about this in my plan? <laughs> now,
Now, Lord, I want you to really use me. Use me, God, but my plan. This is a great plan. It's not his plan. We've all been there. We've all done it. Myself included. But his plan is what's best. His plan is what works. Amen. Let's read in Ephesians chapter 5, please. Ephesians 5, 15. Ephesians 5, 15 <clears throat> through 20. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Man, is that true? <laughs> Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. How about that? How about that? You know how many Christians say, well, you know, you just can't understand God's will. We just never know. You just never know what God's will is. You can't understand. And the Bible says, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. That's not a suggestion. But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to maintain a constant experience of being filled with the Spirit. You guys know I, I grew up Pentecostal, and, and in and the church I grew up in, that church at that time believed that you only spoke in tongues when the Holy Spirit moves upon you, and you begin to shake and tremble, and you got Holy Ghost goosebumps, and your hair stand up on the back of your neck. That's when you pray in tongues. And you don't pray in tongues at any other time. But my wonderful Sunday school teachers, brother and sister Carter, who I will always be thankful for, they taught on being filled with the Spirit. I can take you to the very Sunday school room where I was filled. So they said, who wants to be filled with the Spirit? And I said, well, I do. And uh, they laid hands on me in like seven seconds. Man, I was praying in tongues. Hallelujah. And after the, after the Sunday school class was, was dismissed, they grabbed me and pulled me aside. Now, hey, hey, come here. Come here, Philip. They said, now... Upstairs at big church, they believe that you only speak in tongues when you feel like it. But we're telling you, you need to pray in tongues when you don't feel like it. You need to pray in tongues when you're depressed. You need to pray in tongues when you're discouraged. You need to pray in tongues when you're in a battle. You need to pray in tongues. You just need to pray in tongues all the time. Amen. And that advice has so helped my life. Because we're to maintain a constant experience of being filled with the Spirit. Because here's the deal. We leak. I can get full, but then I leak. I leak out because of the pressures of life, because of the duties and the demands of life. I get caught up into this world doing stuff I got to do and stuff I want to do. I leak out. And the Bible tells us here how to stay filled with the Spirit. You're going to have to speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. The will of God for our lives is that we be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. If you're filled with the Spirit and staying in the flow, you will have a song in your heart. Amen. You will. If you're filled with the Spirit and staying in the flow, you will have a song in your heart. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord is very important to staying in the flow and maintaining the glow. I want to maintain the glow. The glow. I want to stay in the flow. And that requires me making melody in my heart singing to myself and to the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's a flow to the things of the Spirit. Glory to God. There is a flow to the Holy Spirit. There is a flow to the things of the Spirit. Can everybody, can everybody see this? Where you're at? Yeah. Knowledge flows in. Revelation flows up, mm -hmm. wisdom flows out. Amen. Amen. There's a flow. There's a flow to the things of the Spirit. Knowledge flows in. Revelation flows up. And wisdom flows out. Amen. It begins with, with, the, with the knowledge. 
You've got to get the information. You've got to get the material in you. And the Holy Spirit, will get, there's a flow to Him. He is an awesome teacher. He is an awesome teacher. He can get you in a flow where you study and study and study for hours and it's so easy. And man, you're just picking things up, picking things up, things you never saw before. The Holy Spirit wrote that book. He's the author of it and he knows how to teach you. He knows how to show you things you've never seen before. He knows how to make that thing come alive to you. You can get more education in three months by the Holy Ghost than five years at a Bible college. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I need to ask your permission for something. I'm trying to keep Sunday morning short. But I sense in my spirit I need to deal with some things. So we need to go a little bit longer. And I need your permission. Okay? I was 18 years of age. I was accepted at Rayma Bible College. Had an apartment. I was ready to go. I'm packing my bags. And the Lord speaks to me. He says, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to Rayma Bible College. He said, I'm not. And man, I sat down real hard on the edge of my bed. He knocked the wind out of my sails. I was leaving that day. I'm not going to Raymond Bible College. I go, Lord, it's Raymond. This is Kenneth Hagin. You understand, Lord? This is the New Jerusalem. <laughs> this is Tulsa. This is, this is the place. And he said, son, it's not my will for you to ever go to Bible College. And then he said something to me I'll never forget. He said, I want the privilege of teaching you myself. Amen. So I got on the phone, canceled my apartment, canceled Rama. The Spirit of God came on me, and for three days and three nights, I did not eat, I did not sleep, I didn't drink, and all I did was read my Bible, and everything I read, I understood. For three days and three nights. There's a flow to the things of the Spirit. And getting His knowledge on the inside of you, there's a flow. And if you will yield to that flow, he can get you more in a short amount of time. Amen. There's a flow to the things of the Spirit. Revelation coming up. Revelation coming up. Coming up out of your spirit to your mind. Illuminating your understanding. Even though you had the information, now it's coming up. And, and it's, be, it's making sense. And this scripture over in Exodus, and this scripture over in Revelation, with this scripture in Leviticus, and this scripture in Galatians, they come together and you go, Dear Lord, look at this. And you can't sit still and you can't be quiet because there's a flow and that flow of revelation comes up from on the inside. And then you get over into the flow of wisdom and the Holy Spirit begins to show you how to apply it so your life can be a success. Over 90% of college graduates are a failure in life. I'm not saying don't go to college. You've got to find out God's will for your life. But information alone will not make you a success. It has to be a revelation, and you have to have the wisdom to apply it to your life. And so much of that comes not by book knowledge. It comes by the Holy Spirit and you practicing the things of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. I think God put the right people in here today for this message. Amen. You get in that flow, you don't ever want to get out. Unless you just want to go from one flow to another. And I'm convinced when Jesus said rivers of living water, he was talking about different flows of the Holy Spirit. And you yield to this flow for a while, then you yield to this flow, then you yield, to, and you just keep going back and forth between the different flows of the Holy Ghost. And like a river, he can take you places quickly. And he'll pay the bill for it. But you have to be yielded and you have to obey. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Joel chapter 2. That experience of three days and three nights happened to me more than once. It happened one other time in my life. Joel chapter 2. One other time I experienced three days and three nights of no sleeping, no eating, no drinking, and everything I read I understood. We... We magnify our inability to learn. We magnify our inabilities, and we don't give our teacher enough credit. We don't give the Holy Spirit enough credit for the teacher he really is. He can get anything you need to you. Holy Spirit is something else. One time I was at the church, and I was just, you know, I was going to go to my office. 
I just went and reached for the door handle. Going into my office, when I grabbed the door handle, the Spirit of God spoke to me. And he said, Jesus is going to open doors for you that no man can shut. And he said, every time you touch a doorknob for the next three months, I want you to confess that every time you touch a doorknob. Jesus opened doors for me that no man can shut. He's got, he's got ways of teaching you. Amen. And he uses the simple, practical things like a doorknob. <clears throat> and you don't, have to, you, don't have to, you don't have to shell out thousands of dollars <laughs> for a Bible college. <laughs> the Holy Ghost will teach you. In Joel chapter 2, verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the, uh, the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit. And I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillar of smoke. And we'll, we'll stop there. God will pour out His Spirit upon your flesh, and your mouth is the spout. <clears throat> I'll never forget my grandmother, godly woman. She told me we were sitting at the table and I, I had a glass in my hand and uh, I, I spilt some water. <laughs> and she laughed. She said, there's many a slip from the cup to the lip. <laughs> How many times have we drank out of a cup and we still spilt it on ourselves? We read Joel, the Holy Spirit will be poured out. Oh, God's going to pour His Spirit out on all flesh. But God wants to use your mouth as the spout. Amen. Right. He wants to use your mouth for your flesh. Hey, look at this. You can't drink with your mouth closed. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can't pray in tongues and be used of God with your mouth closed. You're going to have to open up your mouth, and you're going to have to speak. You're going to have to yield, and you're going to have to obey. Amen. Praise God. That's, a, that's not a downer. That's an encouragement. Hallelujah. The voice of the flesh is subdued by the voice of the Spirit. The voice of the flesh, the voice of your flesh is, is subdued by the voice of the Spirit. The only thing the devil's got to work with is our flesh. <laughs> That's his area. That's his target, is our flesh. And by flesh, I mean the body, and I mean the, the, uh, the Adamic nature in our soul. That's all he's got to work with is the flesh. And our flesh can scream and yell at us. How do we get rid of that? How do we subdue that when the voice of the Spirit gets louder and louder? the voice of your flesh will get weaker and weaker. Amen. You, know why, you know why Christians have such a hard time with their flesh? It's because their spirit's weaker than their flesh. Their, their flesh is stronger than their spirit. And so their flesh says, hey, I want to do such and such. And the spirit man goes, can, can we please not give it up? <laughs> and that's why Christians walk in the flesh, is because their flesh is stronger than their spirit. But you can get to the place where your spirit man is yelling at you and your flesh is... The voice of your flesh is subdued by the voice of the spirit. And the voice of the spirit's primary place is going to be in your own mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. God says, I'll pour my spirit out upon all flesh. Amen. When that happens... The devil has nothing to work with. He has nothing to work with anymore once your flesh is subdued by the Spirit. That's a good place to shout. Glory to God. All right. Glory to God. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. <sighs> Glory to God. Glory to God. We are a people of faith and we're a people of the Holy Spirit. And we're a people of love. 1 Corinthians 2, 10. 
But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The Spirit of God does what? He searches. He reveals and He searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Why would the Holy Spirit search out the deep things of God since He is God and He knows all? Why would He search them out? Why would He search them out? Because He is delighting in them. He knows them and He delights in them. I have, uh, and I'm sure you probably have uh, toys or trinkets or something that you have put away and from time to time you open up the drawer and you pull out those treasures that you already have, you've already played with, and you look at them again because you enjoy them and you delight in them. Well, the Holy Spirit searches out the deep things of God because He's enjoying them. Okay, hold, hold that in your thinking. I hope you have your seatbelts on. Psalm 77. Psalm 77, 6. Oh, my, 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 my. Boy, the anointing's getting stronger on me. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 77, 6. <clears throat> I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Your spirit searches. Psalm 77, 6. Look at it again. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart. <clears throat> And my spirit made diligent search. Proverbs 20, 27. This is not an isolated place. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Your spirit is searching out the deep things of God and your spirit searches out the deep things of God while you pray in tongues. Your spirit at night while you're sleeping, your spirit is searching out how to bring to pass what you've been praying for. Your spirit man at night while you're sleeping is searching out how to bring to pass what you've been meditating upon. Your spirit man is searching out the deep things of God because he's hungry for them and because he delights in them. You and I were made in the image of God. We were made in the image of the Spirit of God. He searches out, you search out. And you can search out on purpose at night before you go to bed. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I take four minutes. I'm going to pray in tongues. And I'm searching out concerning. And then you, you tell the, the subject. Yes. I've done this. I know what I'm talking about. Pray in tongues three or four minutes, go to sleep. And I, I did this concerning the area of hope. I'm praying in tongues and I believe my spirit man will search out concerning hope. Woke up in the morning and man, I had to start writing as fast as I could write. There's a flow to the things of God. Look at your neighbor say, get in the flow. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can find out anything if you pray in tongues long enough. You can find out anything if you pray in tongues long enough. When you pray in tongues, you are searching out your flow. <laughs> when you pray in tongues, you're searching out the flow of the Holy Ghost. You can pray in tongues about praying in tongues. You can. I have. I have. I've said, Lord, I don't understand, so I'm going to pray in tongues about praying in tongues. And a lot of stuff I'm giving you last week and this week because I got revelation about praying in tongues. You can find out anything if you pray in tongues long enough. Praying in tongues is not... Is not 
Slow down, Phil. Praying in tongues when you want to is not turning the Holy Spirit off and on. Praying in tongues is you getting in the river. It's you yielding to the flow of the Holy Spirit because He's always flowing. You need to get a revelation of this. People say, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that tongues because you can just pray in tongues anytime you want. You just turn the Holy Spirit off and on. He's always on. He's always on. And you praying in tongues is you yielding to Him flowing. But He's flowing whether you're going or not. Rather, you're yielding to that flow. You can stay on a dry river bank the rest of your Christian life and the Holy Spirit will bypass you. But as soon as you say, I'm tired of being a dead, dry Christian, I'm going to get in the flow. I'm going to get wet. Amen. And I'm going to yield and let the Holy Spirit's current take me where He wants to take me. Amen. It's a good journey. Hallelujah. 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 Look at your neighbor say, get in the flow. Rivers of living water. There is a river for your mind. There's a river for your body. There's a river for your money. There's a river for your marriage. There's a river for your children. All you have to do is get in the flow. Two more verses and we're finished. 1 Corinthians 2.12. 1 Isn't it sad... Man, I, I want to say things. I don't, want, I don't want this taken wrong. Isn't it sad that Christians have to go to the world for psychology and for help? Yeah. When we get the Holy Ghost yeah. and He has the mind of Christ, He knows all. We've got the answer living on the inside of us. And there you see Christians. What are you doing? Oh, I'm going to Barnes & Noble. I'm going to the self-help section. That's your problem. Your help, yourself doesn't need help. Yourself needs crucified. Yeah. That's your problem. You know, don't help self. Crucify it. But the answer is on the inside of us. And the Holy Spirit is saying, oh, just yield to the flow. 1 Corinthians 2.12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. When you compromise your knowings, you're missing God's will for your life. When you compromise your knowings, you're missing God's will for your life. You have to hold fast to what you've been, what's been revealed to you. Those things that you know, that you know, that you know, you've got to hold on to them. And people will try to talk you out of them. I had a, a preacher buddy of mine. Oh, man, he was all over my case. I want you to get involved in this, this financial thing with me. He said, this company's growing. It's growing. It's taking over. He said, man, we're going to be rich. And I said, I'll pray about it. And I prayed about it. The Lord said, no, don't get involved in it. So I told him, he said, man, hell, he got mad at me. He got mad at me, and he said, I'm selling my car. I'm putting all my money in this thing. He said, man, I, you know, and he just gave me the hard time for like a week. And man, the pressure was on me to, to give some money and get involved in this thing. But on the inside, the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 don't do it. Three months, the thing went belly up, and he was walking everywhere, and I still had my money. When the Spirit of God reveals truth to you and you know something, you've got to hold on to it. Amen. If you compromise it, you're going to miss the will of God for your life. Mm -hmm. That includes who you spend time with, where you live, where you work, who you marry, what church you go to, all down the line. Whatever's been revealed to you, you've got to hold on to those knowings. Amen. And the Holy Spirit's going to use good people to pressure you to stop. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was a preacher buddy of mine. Yeah. He loved the Lord. Still loves the Lord. Been out of the ministry for decades now. And it took him a long time to recover. I went home saying, thank you, Holy Ghost, for revealing to me to not get involved in that. Thank you that I'm in my car driving home to my family. I don't have to walk from Jonesboro, Arkansas to Lake City. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We get in trouble when we compromise our knowings. Hold fast to your knowings. Be wise. Keep your Holy Ghost knowings to yourself. Only share them with other Holy Ghost people who are of like precious faith. Yes. And that's, that's a criteria. Holy Ghost people and people of like precious faith. Those are the people you can share your knowings with as He leads you. As He leads you. All right, here's where we close. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 and 15. Boy, we went long today. Thank you so much.
Thank you, thank you. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 and 15. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord, uh, uh, Jacob, you don't have this one. The Lord added this. <laughs> he added this earlier. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. The Holy Spirit doesn't pray in tongues, you do. He gives you the words, you are the one who speaks them. Every time you speak in tongues, it's your choice. Right? It's your choice. The Holy Spirit will never make you pray in tongues. Now, He may... He may prompt you, He may give you an unction, He may even give you an urgency, but He will never force you to pray in tongues. You have to be willing and yielded. Right? Okay, here's where we close. This is a word. He says, I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding. For all of you in this room who do not pray in tongues and you want to, and you're hungry for the Holy Spirit to, to be baptized in the Spirit, here is what you need to do. You need to say, I will. Amen. I will speak in tongues. Amen. And I will speak, I will pray with the understanding. For those of us who do pray in tongues, and we're hungry for interpretation, because we're praying a lot of yes. prayers in tongues, but we need to interpret our own praying, yes. our confession is, I will. I will pray with the understanding. I'm going to spend, I'm going to go to my prayer closet. I'm going to spend 30 minutes praying in tongues and I will interpret. I will. If the Holy Spirit is faithful to give me the tongues, he's going to be faithful to give me the interpretation. Everybody say, I will. I will. I will. Now, for those of you who don't pray in tongues, guess what? You can say, I will. By the time you get to your car, you will be. Because I will. I will. Not I will six months from now, a year from now. No, I will. I will. And today I will pray in tongues and I will get the understanding. Personally, I'm telling you, I feel Flynn will. Because the Holy Spirit is just beginning to give me the, the interpretation to my tongues. And it's a, it's a word here and a word there. A word here, a word there. And I'm like, oh, glory to God, Holy Spirit, come on, come on. He's like, no, you come on. I've been doing this for years. <laughs> just yield to the flow. And keep doing it, and it'll come. Amen. So, does the Holy Ghost pray in tongues? No. no. Who prays in tongues? We do. We do. When, when do we do? Anytime. Anytime. That's terrible English. When do we do? But when do we do? When we decide, right? When we decide. He's always on. He's always flowing. We yield to that flow. Right? Okay, don't get, don't get, don't get stiff. Don't get tense, because I just felt that starting to go up right now. It's like, oh, what's he going to do? What's he, is he going to have us praying tongues? Is he going to call us forward? What's going to happen now? Just relax. Just relax. I'm not calling anybody up. I'm not putting anybody on the spot. Relax. Shh. Everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> 